let's kickstart the second session for today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Benjamin Yip, a gastroenterologist and hepatologist at Mount Elizabeth Hospital. Prior to his private practice, Dr. Yip served in the public sector for almost two decades. In Ng Ting Fong General Hospital, he was the only specialist doing both ERCP and EUS. His topic for today is advanced endoscopic techniques in the management of gastrointestinal malignancies. Dr. Yip, please. Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Benjamin Yip, a gastroenterologist with subspecialty interest in advanced endoscopy. And I thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give a talk this afternoon entitled Advanced Endoscopic Techniques in the Management of GI Malignancies. This is my talk outline. First, I'll define what advanced endoscopy is. Then I'll give a list of advanced endoscopy procedures that are performed commonly in GI malignancies. And now I'll home in on pancreatic ductal adeno CA or PDAC. And I'll touch briefly on collegial CA, which I don't have much time for. And then I'll give some concluding remarks. So first up, some definitions. So advanced endoscopy is divided into major and minor skills. For the major skills, we have EUS, so endoscopy ultrasound. We have ERCP, or endoscopic retrograde cholangial pancreatography. We have ESD, or endoscopic submucosal dissection, so and so forth. There are also minor skills, including radiofrequency ablation, or RFA, or endoscopic placement of intragastric balloons for weight loss, so on and so forth. What are the list of procedures that one can do in uh, GI malignancies endoscopically. Typically, we divide the gut into luminal structures from the esophagus down to the colorectum and then the solid organs. So likewise, for advanced endoscopic procedures in malignancy, you can divide out in the same way. As you can see, for the luminal structures, uh, self-expandable metal stands or SEMS uh, is commonly used and the early cancers can be treated with uh, ESD. For the pancreatic cancers, ERCP and its uh, various diagnostic and treatment uh, techniques come into four. And endoscopic ultrasound, or EUS, again, with its uh, various diagnostic and therapeutic uh, maneuvers are also important. And I've started the ERCP, uh, sorry, the EUS uh, therapeutic techniques, uh, which uh, are try to access the bile ducts when standard ERCP has failed. And also for patients with gastric outlet obstruction, endoscopic gastric bypass can be undertaken via EUS. For the biliary uh, cancers, uh, similar ERCP and EUS techniques uh, can be done as well. So I'll not be touching on the luminal side of things today. I'll be focusing mainly on PDAC. Okay, some pictures here. To the left, you have a self-expandable metal stand or uh, SAMS, and these need to be anchored down with a endoscopic stitching device in the center or uh, over the skip over the scope uh, clip on the right side. The picture on the left shows ESD being done on early gastric cancer. This is uh, in the distal antrum and uh, performed using a needle knife. The cartoon on the right shows uh, ERCP. As the name suggests, it is endoscopic technique to access the bowel duct or pancreatic duct. The pictures on the left shows uh, various uh, biliary stands. The top uh, two on the left are plastic stands and they come in straight or pigtail varieties. And the next two pictures shows uh, biliary uh, SEMS or expandable metal stands. So the pictures on the right shows um, the cholangioscopy uh, device from Boston Scientific, which is single operator uh, performed nowadays. The two pictures here depict the uh, EUS, in particular the uh, linear type uh, echo endoscope. As you can see, this is a fine needle being inserted down the scope channel, and it can be seen real time on ultrasound. Now moving to uh, PDAC proper. How does one diagnose PDAC? I think it's best done using ultrasound uh, uh, via EUS and FNAB is uh, uh, widely done nowadays and is the best mode for obtaining tissue um, even if the tumor is poorly visualized by other imaging techniques. And it's shown to cause uh, intraperitoneal spread uh, less commonly compared to percutaneous biopsy. As you can see here, it's very high in uh, sensitivity and specificity. 
So the picture on the right shows a head of pancreas tumor that is abutting the portal vein, and this can be sampled readily on EUS. What about comparing EUS uh, with uh, a CT in uh, diagnosing and staging pancreatic cancer? It is uh, found to be better uh, 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 compared to CT, and um, EUS gives a better T staging, uh, whereas the X staging is the same as uh, CT. So this is it in the table form. As you can see, across all variables, uh, EUS tends to perform slightly better than a CT scan. Except when the mass is quite big, then both modalities can pick up the tumor. What about vascular invasion? Uh, uh, EUS tends to do quite well as well, and their sensitivity uh, reaching 100%. And with an odds ratio, it's very good of uh, more than 40. And what's the accuracy of uh, actually EUS FNAB uh, from a meta-analysis that was done uh, of over 1,800 patients? The overall sensitivity and specificity is very good, more than 90%. Okay, I will skip this. And the AURC is excellent as well, 0.974, with an excellent odds ratio of 168. What about EUS FNAB con uh, compared to percutaneous biopsy? In a prospective randomized trial, uh, comparing both these approaches, uh, there was no uh, difference uh, found. Uh, but EUS FNA was found to be more useful uh, when the lesions were smaller. So this is the said paper. Although numerically, EUS uh, was better with a sensitivity more than that of uh, ultrasound and CT, uh, but unfortunately, it was not uh, statistically significant because actually the trial uh, failed to reach its uh, enrollment uh, targets. <clears throat> what about advantages over EUS versus percutaneous? As mentioned before, uh, there's less risk of uh, needle tract seeding and peritoneal carcinomatosis, and also the cost is reduced. Um, in this uh, retrospective uh, review of uh, 46 patients on each side, uh, only 2% uh, had uh, peritoneal seeding when one does EUS, uh, compared to more than 16% uh, when it's done percutaneously. Okay, next, moving on to biliary stents. So uh, biliary stents can provide minimally invasive and uh, effective palliation of jaundice. Um, uh, randomized trials and meta-analysis have showed no difference in survival between uh, endoscopic stent pl placement and uh, surgical bypass, but um, endoscopic uh, stent uh, insertions have got lower morbidity and uh, mortality. So this is a systematic review uh, comparing endoscopic and surgical bypass. Um, of course, uh, in terms of recurrent biliary obstruction, it favors uh, surgery. But when you compare a metal and a plastic stent, uh, then uh, it favors a metal stent. And uh, the lowest graph would show uh, two types of commonly used materials for the plastic stents, and there is no difference in terms of biliary obstruction. What about the indications for biliary stents? There are two main categories, the palliative uh, drainage and the pre-op drainage, and I'll leave you to uh, read uh, the sub-indications. What about the big question, plastic versus metal stents? Now, compared with plastic stents, metal stents have a lower risk of recurrent obstruction, uh, but not superior in terms of technical success, therapeutic success, mortality, and even complications. So uh, many experts um, have actually uh, uh, advised us to use uh, to choose these stents based on expected length of survival, quality of life, cost, and of course uh, physician expertise. So we know that plastic stents have a shorter uh, median patency compared to metal stents, but they also cost uh, more than ten times uh, cheaper compared to uh, metal stents. In this uh, uh, review uh, by uh, several advanced endoscopy experts. They have suggested that if the patient's survival is going to be more than six months, then a metal stent uh, is, is preferable. Or if you have certain problems like impending jordan obstruction, a uh, non-compliant patient who won't come for repeat ERCP, or there was already repeat uh, plastic stent occlusion, or those living very far away, then you can move straight to a metal stent, even if the life expectancy is less than six months. However, if you have a, a short life expectancy, then uh, one may go for just a plastic biliary stent. 
Now, Billowy uh, metal stands are two types of covered versus uncovered. Uncovered stands is basically a bare uh, uh, meshwork of wire, and a fully or partially covered uh, stands are, are, are those which there is a covering, uh, which extends either partially or fully. So the picture on the left shows a bare metal stand, and the picture of a, on the right, you can barely make out uh, the covering, and that is a covered metal stand. So what's the difference and advantages for the uncovered SAMs? Um, it can be placed anywhere in the biliary tree because it doesn't block the cystic duct in a patient with an intact gallbladder, and it has got low rates of stand migration because uh, tissue ingrowth can be expected. For the covered SAMs, the advantages, it is potentially removable because uh, there is hardly any uh, tissue ingrowth. What about disadvantages of uncovered SAMs? Um, you cannot remove it uh, once you place it uh, for more than a month or so, and there are probably higher rates of tumor ingrowth because uh, the mesh metal is open. Uh, covered SAMs wise, the disadvantages uh, that would be there was decreased, uh, sorry, increased uh, stem migration 6 to 8 percent, and a patient with uh, intact gallbladder, if you cross the cystic duct, there'll be chance of cholecystitis. So in this uh, study, where they uh, uh, looked at both covered and uncovered stents, um, they found to be no uh, uh, difference in the stent patencies, actually. Um, yeah. What about if you compare uh, two types of different plastic stents, a Niti D by Tae Wong and a wall stand by Boston Scientific? Again, there are no uh, significant differences in terms of obstruction, but uh, in a subgroup analysis for this paper, they, they found that for higher obstructions, the more conformable uh, nitty stands uh, might do uh, better. What about stands uh, inserted by the radiologist percutaneously? Um, I think the evidence is that endoscopic stenting is preferable, as in uh, it has got lower adverse event uh, rates. Except when, of course, um, endoscopic stent placement fails, um, uh, uh, usually because there's diurnal obstruction or there's prior surgical bypass, making the ampulla not readily accessible by the endoscopist. <coughs> now, comparing adverse events uh, between endoscopic and percutaneously inserted uh, stands in this uh, very large database study of more than 7,000 patients having ERCP and more than 1,000 patients having a PTC. So actually, uh, ERCP performs uh, well across the various uh, uh, indicators for both pancreatic cancer and cholangiac cancer and PTC only uh, performs better in a high volume center uh, uh, for cholangial carcinoma. Sorry, uh, performs uh, the same as, as ERCP. So what about for palliation and, and pain relief? So one can uh, um, ablate or neuralize the celiac plexus via EUS, and this is done by destroying the afferent neural pathways and the sympathetic structures, and it's achieved by injecting um, a mixture of alcohol and local anesthetic. So the cartoon on the lower left shows the EOS in the proximal stomach and the, the, the celiac plexus is accessed um, at a celiac takeoff and the middle picture shows the celiac takeoff from the abdominal aorta and uh, the celiac plexus is usually found on either side. And the last picture shows injection of uh, the said materials. The efficacy is uh, proven in this meta-analysis uh, that uh, CPN is, uh, is uh, good at uh, relieving cancer pain in 50 to 80% cent, uh, 80 of patients and lasts for two to three months. And this is a study uh, 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 conducted, uh, sorry, this is a meta-analysis that looked at the three papers for pancreatic cancer patients and the efficacy is about 72.5%. Okay, how about accessing the bowel duct when the standard ERCP has failed? So one can access the bowel duct from the duodenum, that is cholecystical duodenostomy. One can access the bowel duct uh, from the proximal stomach, and that is hepatico gastrostomy. And one can also do a rendezvous procedure in the next uh, picture on the left, uh, where the bowel duct is uh, punctured and a guide wire is put down into the duodenum, and then the echo endoscope is exchanged for a duodenoscope or ERCP scope, and then a standard ERCP can be done. The cartoon on the right shows a combination of the three uh, procedures. Sometimes when a tumor is small, EUS also can be used to uh, insert fiducial markers uh, to aid the radiotherapist in finding the tumor for RT. Also for patients with uh, malignant gastric outlet obstruction uh, and not suitable for surgery or not willing to go for surgery, then EUS guided 
uh, gastric bypass is coming to the fore uh, with the advent of this new uh, lumen opposing metal stands or lamps. So I'd like to illustrate a case uh, recently that I had. Uh, Madam SL, a 72-year-old lady, she's quite frail after a stroke, and she came with a painless jaundice and the bilirubin was 378. So the CT scan clearly shows a head of pancreas mass, and uh, the surgeons have deemed her not to be a surgical candidate. And uh, But the patient and the family were willing to consider uh, palliative chemotherapy. So ERCP was done uh, to release the jaundice and also to try and obtain tissue diagnosis. So the picture on the left shows the ampulla endoscopically and I was trying to cannulate the bowel duct. So uh, sometimes you get into the duct you don't want to. So I got into the pancreatic duct first, which crosses uh, uh, the spine. And then with a double guide wire technique, my second wire could then go up the bowel duct. And then I did a small uh, sphincterotomy on, on, on the left here, you can see. And then on the picture on the lower left, you can see a, a biliary brush inserted into the bowel duct and uh, endoscopic uh, uh, biliary brushings were taken uh, from the stricture. And then uh, finally, I pull, uh, placed a plastic stand because uh, tissue diagnosis is yet to be achieved. Okay, and then uh, thankfully, uh, the bilirubin brushings yielded the diagnosis and then the bilirubin uh, uh, came down very quickly and the patient was referred successively to Matt Onk. So I won't dwell too much about the CCA. I'll just move on to the last uh, slide where it is uh, interesting. You can see some pictures because of time. Okay, so for this interesting study, uh, the Korean uh, uh, authors have studied 111 patients with uh, bowel duct tumors, both uh, benign and malignant. There are some pictures that I think are quite nice. So a uh, picture on the top left is a nodular mass. On the top right is a smooth, uh, narrow tapering. And the bottom left is a papillary uh, a mucosal projection. And the bottom right is actually just a villus a mucosal projection. Okay, more pictures on the top left, actually a coral reef like mucosal mass, and uh, the uh, uh, bottom left actually just shows a, a messy sort of intraluminal mass. The top right shows a polypoidal mucosal mass, and uh, the bottom right shows actually a small polypoid lesions. And with a direct visualized, uh, visualized uh, biopsies, all these turn out to be a CCA or cholangial carcinoma. Okay, I won't go through this as well. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, AE is a subspecialty of gastroenterology, and there are various techniques te that can be used to manage cancers along the GI tract. And this is best demonstrated with pancreatic adenocarcinoma, um, as shown, EUSF and AB is the best diagnostic tool, and both uh, jaundice and cholangitis can be treated or palliated with ERCP and stent insertions, and various newer EUS guided techniques can offer a variety of palliative options. For cholangitis carcinoma, uh, the same can be done with ERCP, uh, EUS, and F and AB, and also cholangioscopy, and you've, show, uh, you've seen some uh, nice pictures. And the treatment and palliation procedures and options are the same uh, compared to uh, PDAC. And I thank you very much for your kind attention.